Hello everyone, I'm Brian. Welcome back. Let's go ahead and continue. Smelly people. <laughs> I'm interested in the phenomena of levitation, for example. And there's the famous case of St. Teresa of Avila who would levitate. Now, that in itself would not be a mystical experience because a, a, a psychical researcher would say, oh, she's levitating, we must measure how high she goes and how far she moves. And, and so I accept that is not a mystical phenomenon itself. But St. Teresa herself was having a mystical experience. So for her, she was in an ecstatic state. So there was a link between now, why is mystical being and ecstatic psychic. mystical? Why, why is being ecstatic mystical? Well, I, I have no experience of mystical experience yeah, myself. So let me come to that. Yeah. See, right now, recently some journalist is asking me, Sadhguru, if there's one achievement in your life, what is it? Mm -hmm. I said, tears. So what do you mean by tears? I said, every day, millions of people, if they close their eyes, tears of ecstasy are washing their cheeks. This is the only achievement I have, rest is all circus. Rest is circus only in the world. You have to do circus to get people attracted <laughs> to that process. So, being ecstatic happens if you stop creating unpleasantness within you. When I say unpleasantness, you sit here and think, oh, what is she doing? She's writing down, what's she doing? Will she get it right? I don't think she'll get it right. <laughs> this is a genuine opinion. <laughs> uh, does she understand what I'm talking? Is he okay? Is that this, this, this. I'm saying these thousand things are there. Mm. It's not even conscious. <clears throat> these things are multiplying into millions as you grow up. Now, all this muck which you think is your thought process and your emotions and your opinions, especially you're in a university full of opinions, <laughs> okay? <laughs> if with all these opinions, you can't see nothing clearly. To just keep down all the opinions that you have, it takes a lot of work. People are around me for twenty, thirty years, same people. I don't have a single opinion about them. Only when it comes to work, I have to do something with them. Then I have an opinion whether they can do this or not do this. But when I just look at them, I just look at them as they are now. I don't care how they were ten years ago. I don't care how they were yesterday. When I look at them now, I see them as they are, because this is very important for what I do. Otherwise, oh, this one is possible, this is an enlightenment candidate, this is no good, that is a good one, this has good genetics, that has bad genetics, this is all rubbish. It's got nothing to do. All these things have got something to do with their bodies and minds. I have no business with their body or their mind, for that matter. So they may think loving their guru is a great thing. I think nothing about it. Because love is a simple emotion, even a dog can do it very well, better than you. Mm. Hello? <laughs> we are making a big deal out of it and exporting it to heaven and saying, God is love. <laughs> this is because people have grown up bereft of love. I'll tell you a simple… can I tell you a little situation? <clears throat> Before we get to that, um, oh man, I had something I was going to say. Interestingly enough though, I guess just real quick, since I forgot my original thing, was uh, bhakti yoga is love though, is it not? Or is it devotion? I've always said both, and I guess it could be kind of seen the same. I, I prefer devotion though, and devotion to God, I wouldn't say that my devotion is devotion to people. Let me pause and try to remember what I was going to originally say. So what I was originally going to say, now that I remember, was <laughs> my mind doesn't really... I used to say that my mind runs a lot of things all the time, but I, I've learned to ignore it. Now I think my mind's mostly calm, but it still runs. It's still, whenever there's there's something to think about, it runs around that specific thing. So, uh, what I need to do tomorrow. I think of all the things that I need to do tomorrow. Then I think of how to do all the things to do tomorrow. I need to schedule all the things I need to do tomorrow, at least in a particular order. And then after that, you know, I'm fine. Nothing else. I, when I think about that again, I don't have to th rethink everything. I just think about the things I need to do and see, is there anything else? My mind used to think a lot, but like you was talking about. But I think I've, uh, perhaps I've uh, quieted that down just a little bit.
Now, I, and like I wasn't trying. Maybe, maybe, maybe the, the all the talks and me ignoring it. Maybe it stopped on its own to a degree, to a degree. And he was talking about how you have to let all the um, the negative emotions or negative thoughts. What was it? Negative. Um, anyways, you have to let go of all of these things to have a very calm mind and uh, to have ecstasy or bliss ecstasy I think is what he said with tears is what he said I guess I've never gotten to that point because I know I'm not in, I, I know I'm not I know I'm not enlightened because I still do hold on to some things it's something that's gonna be just very difficult to do it's something that will have to come through time and through perhaps meditation whenever I have time for that Again, I know people are going to be pushing, you need to do it, you need to do it, absolutely. Look, if I die and I don't do it, guess what? If, if there is such thing as reincarnation, I'll do it then. <laughs> Look, I've, I've reincarnated so many times already, like, I've, I've already, I'm fine with it. <laughs> I'll get to it when I get to it. I'm, I'm not in a hurry to, you know, get enlightened or anything. If it happens, it happens. I'm not going to stress about it. I was to speak in Tel Aviv, unfortunately, there is a situation there. Uh, a few years ago, and I'm tra flying out of Atlanta. I'm to land at around 11.30 in the morning and speak at 6.30 in the evening. But some delays in the flights and I end up landing there at 6 o'clock in the evening. In these 40 years, I have not been late to a single event, so I don't want to... You know, it's a commitment that I have that I don't go late. So I quickly change in the airport and rushing to the event, and I'm famished. Uh, because I'm flying an American airline, there's nothing edible, <laughs> there's nothing edible on that plane. <laughs> no, peanuts. <laughs> no, not even that, they have, <laughs> they throw some dog parts at you <laughs> Whatever, nothing edible for me. So, uh, these, uh, whatever these groundnuts, they give you only in the domestic. In the international, it's only dog part in some bread and something, something, it's just... Uh, not for me. So I'm super hungry, but you know, I have to be there on time, I rush. And then I find to my amazement, it never happens to me, I'm speaking at a fine restaurant. <laughs> oh yeah, you talked about this. This is coherence <laughs> <laughs> Then I walk in and people are already there, they're greeting me. One man comes up and says, Shalom. I ask him, what does it mean? He says, this is the highest way of greeting. I said, it's all right, that's your opinion, but what does it mean? He says, no, 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 this is the highest way of greeting. I said, all right, what does the word mean? Then he says, it means peace. I said, why is peace the highest way of greeting, unless you're born in Middle East? In South India, somebody comes up to me in the morning and says, peace. <laughs> yeah. I said, what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm saying anything that you deprive yourself of slowly Highest rises form. to heaven. Mm -hmm. You've not seen peace in your life, peace becomes God. You've not seen love in your life, love becomes God. Bl you've not seen blissfulness in your life, bliss becomes God. No, these are all simple human emo emotions. So if yes. Saint Teresa, if she walked around blissfully, I'm Okay, that's an odd cut there. Glad for her. Today I can show you, if not millions, at least hundreds and thousands of people who are blissed out, at least for parts of the day. I am blissed out all the time. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> so, for me to simply close my eyes and come to tears is just two moments, I'll be there. There are many, many people like that here and everywhere. So it's wonderful if that woman walked like that, it's a fantastic thing, because that's how a human being should be. You shouldn't make a saint out of her. She is a wonderful human being. And every human being should be that way. They must walk the streets like this. When they see the flowers in the tree, they must, tears must come. When they see the clouds, tears must come. When they see a child, tears must come. When they close their eyes, tears must come. Tears of love and ecstasy not tears of misery and pain. So, right now it becomes such a rarity in a given society. Now you suddenly think she's got God going in her. No, 
because she doesn't need God, human beings are capable of experiencing these things. I'm saying these are all experiences that human beings have. Almost every human being at some point, in a moment of love or joy or something, tears have come to them. It's just that it's not common. If she made it a part of her life, fantastic. But in Eastern societies, there are any number of saints like that who always lived like that. I'm not trying to bring her down. All I'm saying is... Well, you I'm say bring her down, you mean from the levitation or from the... Uh, <laughs> levitation I am not talking about. It. Yep. I'll, because that's a question of breathing in hydrogen, <laughs> not oxygen. <laughs> so real quick with that one, uh, it's very interesting. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt what said Guru says there, you know, it's to say that we see people who are like so calm and collective and, you know, like they have no stress in life and we look to them as though they're deities, people, extraordinary people, not extraordinary, <laughs> extra above ordinary people. <laughs> And, uh, like, there's nothing that gets to them, they're always so happy, like, these are not normal human beings, something that we look up to. And Sadhguru is sitting there, Sadhguru is sitting here saying that, you know, this is, this is not extraordinary, extra above ordinary, or deity level, or whatever, this is just how human beings should be. It's just that the West has been so deprived of that, that when they see someone like that, they think of them as a god. Kind of, it's pretty kind of crazy, true though. And we we become so busy we don't we don't do any inward looking. It's getting really crazy. I'm saying I don't want to bring her down. My work is to raise the humanity, not bring down somebody from the heaven. So unfortunately in those societies, because everybody else is in such a mess, if one human being rises, you think she fell from the top. No, she rose wonderful for her. Mm -hmm. There you go. Well, they, they did make… yeah, but… <laughs> but I'm saying there's nothing mystical about that. Uh, I mean, that's a question We can of say what, that, what, is a, that is clearly a spiritual experience, let's say. Oh, spiritual is fine. I mean, yes. the, the label… No, because we are trying yeah. to make some… draw some distinction between psychic, spiritual and mystical. So her experience, we can put it clearly in the category of a spiritual experience. That, that is fine, because that, that's a question of semantics and, and… No, no, these are not semantics. These are clear distinctions in experience. See, when you look at it from outside intellectually, it amounts to semantics. In terms of experience, what happens in my body is physical, what happens in my mind is mental, what happens in my emotions is emotional, what happens in my spirit is spiritual, is distinctly there, nobody can question that. Because somebody is questioning it from outside, because they can't see it. If somebody is shedding tears out of love, we can sit here and think, oh, maybe some pain. This is our conclusion. But they may be blissed out with love and tears may be coming out, possible? Yes. So, semantic issue comes because we are outside observers to human subjectivity. That'll never work. Uh, whether she was having a spiritual or a mystical experience, I, I, you know, I, I bow to your knowledge because I... I no, I am not saying her, she did mm. not have a mystical experience. <laughs> because people observed that she is in tears of ecstasy, that is a spiritual experience. She might have had mystical experiences, which she cannot show to people. How will she show? Hmm. But, but the, the question I was, I was going to ask was, I was interested in the status of psychic phenomena, because why I'm interested in psychical phenomena is because I see them as making a link between matter and spirituality, between mm -hmm. science and spirituality, because in no, psychical sir, can research... I, can I do this? Because this is there, you know, in between. Uh, yes. Uh, they have broke it for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't want the tail and the head to come together. <laughs> Whoever made it. <laughs> anyway, see, uh, psychic phenomena is extension of the mind. Yes. We can extend our body if you want. Right now we can do a simple experiment, sir, shall we do? That by all means, yeah. Please sit, little spine erect. What we will do is put our hands together like this and we will vigorously rub these two hands together with eyes closed for let's say uh, thirty to thirty seconds, all right? Okay. Like this.
30 seconds is a long time. It, it, <laughs> well, my specious presses is changing, <laughs> yeah. Now, keeping your eyes closed, just separate them by three to four inches. Okay. Something happening between two, your, your two hands, something a little bit, yes, whatever feel, that is. Feel the Let's not try to define it, describe it, it's an extension of the body. Hmm. You can extend the body like this. Right now you have heard of phantom legs and things, somebody loses a leg yes. or a hand. Even though the physical leg is gone, still they're still experiencing it because in extended body, yeah. as there is a physical body, there's an energetic body which can stay intact if the loss of body is very sudden like that. There are tantrics, we should not go here, I'm entering dangerous territory in a university. Why should I commit suicide like this? Let me leave the tantrics alone. Hmm? <laughs> so, there are people who can leave their body here and go and do something and again come back. It's called parakaya pravesha. That means you enter something else. This is extension of the body, yeah. which is psychic. Extension of the body and mind to do something is a psychic process. What you're talking about, yeah. Saint Teresa, that is a spiritual experience, what we people are seeing. Whether she's having a mystical experience or, or not, nobody will know. She might have, she might not have. But she is definitely, if she's all blissed out, she's having a spiritual experience. Yeah. Okay, another weird cut. I'm sure I have this on Sadhguru's website, or YouTube video. That is really odd if I cut twice already. I'm just trying to define that. But what the, the point I'm making is that from the point of view of extending science, these phenomena are interesting because that you can study these phenomena using the sort of techniques that a, a scientist would use. Uh, you know, you can test for telepathy in a laboratory, you can test for psychokinesis, whether you can affect See, because it. Because it's all psychic phenomena, mm. telepathy, telekinesis, uh, whatever other things that people are talking about, this is all psychic phenomena which I am personally not interested in because that will not in any way rise a human being beyond their limitations. Ah, that, exactly. It will only make them little more competent. It's like, if I... I'm using a bad example mm. again, if I have to kill somebody, I must go there and do something to them. But if I have a gun from here, I can shoot them. This is psychic phenomenon. From here, I can do things. I don't have to go there and do things. So a gun is more efficient than a knife. In UK, it's still they use knives, that's why I'm saying. There, there, there are a few guns, but mainly knives, yes. <laughs> so I'm saying, psychic phenomena is like this, you're extending your psychological and physical forces to do certain things and come back. But this will only at the most give you a little advantage in the world. You will not rise anywhere. I, I accept that, but the reason I'm emphasizing that is because in the attempt to expand science yes. to accommodate That's these phenomena, interest. this is... It, uh, and it's nothing to do with helping somebody become enlightened, it, it but nevertheless I'm saying it's helpful, it's of interest to me, yes. because that's how I can expand science to accommodate these phenomena. It's, it's, if you like, it's part of the way of going towards it unifying science and spirituality. So, even though you no, say you, it's not you, of interest... I, I'm, I'm saying you saying don't have to accommodate this. Mm. Let's dismiss all the things that I'm saying. Mm. Right now, in my opinion, science is looking in the right direction. They have to extend their look. I'm asking, can you build a telescope which will see something which is not physical in nature? That's what you need to do. Uh, and s the answer is not with a physical... Uh... With mathematics, mm -hmm. I'll come to that. So, we, because we're talking about time, which I see as the most basic entity from infinite to zero is manifestation of time. So it's an infinite space because it's a mix of time and space. 
It's, it's always been like that, it's time is the fundamental firmament, space is happening on top of it. Now, beyond this time which we refer to as a cyclical process, because time as we know it, as we experience it right now, exists only because of cyclical movement. A planet turns a day, moon goes around a month, planet goes around the sun a year. This is our experience of time and similar cycles are happening in our own bodies and various phenomena in the world. But a time which is not cyclical, which is just a stillness, we call this Mahakala, that means the greater time. There is a particular deity enshrined in central India which used to be the center of time for many millennia before the British came to India and they shifted it to green which mean time. <laughs> yeah. This was the mean time in the world because the maritime uh, travelers from Asia, because that's where it started, this was considered the line of time, this is where the time started. So there they established a particular deity which is called Mahakala. So well, let me not go into those things but essentially Things were done so that people can experience something beyond the limitations of their body. Because if you do not cross the limitations of your body, you will not cross the cycles of time in any way. Do what you want. As long as this body is there, you are within the manifestation of the cycle of time. So right now, you're looking the right way. If you can only build a telescope somehow, or the telescope need not necessarily be a physical pipe, if even this… all these numbers can go there and read something or see something which is non-physical in nature, absolutely non-physical in nature, then science will see what is there. Otherwise, we're looking in the direction, but… <coughs> um, Lakhani was talking something about this. Um, I forgot what he called it, um, dark energy? Uh, negative is a negative mass. No, nah, that doesn't sound familiar. Anyways, Lakhani was talking about this, and is is it quantum physics? Something about uh, and this part. It's got to be negative energy. All the the empty energy, or sort of empty space, or something like that. Good lord. Don't really study physics very much, so <laughs> clearly. No ice. And so the question is, how can physics do that? I mean, for example, people are interested yeah, in… Yeah, I think we should drop the word physics, because I'm talking about crossing the physical. Well, I mean, even the word… when I talk about expanding physics to accommodate these phenomena, it is not clear that that is the right word, because most physicists will not want to call it physics. They, they will say it's philosophy or something, but… Um, and so I'm quite happy, in fact, I, I, I tend to use another word, I tend to use the word hyperphysics. This, this is quite good science, systematic way of… Yeah, but, but you see, within, within physics itself, there's the whole question of what is physics. It, among physicists, it's a big issue now, what do we regard as physics? Because I, some of the ideas I was talking about yesterday, like M-theory and these higher dimensions, we still haven't got any instruments that actually detect these extra dimensions. So people will say, I mean physicists will say, some physicists will say, this isn't physics, this is just mathematics. Or it's even, it's, it's just philosophy. Now what is interesting to me is that what we mean by science has constantly evolved. So in the old days you used to think that science was to do with experiments. But if you're an astronomer, you can't, do, you can't do experiments with stars and galaxies. In some sense, the universe does the experiments for you because you've got billions of stars and billions of galaxies. So the universe does the experiments. But, but you're still, it's crucial you're making observations. But then that only works because you've got millions of galaxies and millions of stars. So people would say, well, you've only got one universe, so therefore how can cosmology mm -hmm. be proper part of science? But now we accept it is part of it is part of science. It is part of physics because we understand the 
the theory which explains the universe. But and so now uh, we're talking. On just what basis do we come to this conclusion? There's only one universe. Well, exactly. Now that leads into the next. You you foresee my next point, which is that now people talk about the multiverse, which is not spiritual or mystical. It's psychic. And it's well, yeah. Well, well, the point is the multiverse, in a certain sense, is just in the mind because we cannot see the other universes. And I get into a lot of. I've written a book about the multiverse, universe or multiverse. And one gets into arguments with other physicists, they say, this isn't physics, because you can't see the other universe. And a crucial thing about science is, it has to be something you can see, you've got to get evidence. But there are lots of things in, in science and in physics in particular, you can never see, but we still accept as physics. You can never see inside a black hole, but everyone, ex most physicists accept that's part of physics. You can never see a quark, which is the subatomic particle which makes up neutrons and protons, but everybody agrees that this is part of physics. So in physics now we're used to the idea that there are things which we cannot see and directly get evidence for, but it's regarded as physics because it's part of this mathematical framework because at least part of the theory can be, can be tested. Now, so one of the counter arguments, you mentioned the multiverse, even though you can't see these other universes, you can argue it's still part of physics because they're predicted by theories of physics which can be tested indirectly. But you, what I'm saying is that there's a whole controversy going on even within physics about what physics is. And in some sense, our, our paradigms of physics now are essentially just mental models because the concept of reality when you talk about higher dimensions and quantum theory, I mean quantum theory has got obviously experimental tests, but these higher dimensions don't yet have experimental tests. And so really it is a creation of mind. If you said psychic, in a sense it is psychic, it's a creation of mind, because at the moment we don't have the eyes, if you like, with which to actually perceive Going back to the Saint uh, Teresa, mm -hmm. suppose out of her blissfulness, she told all the... Where was she? In which part of... She oh, okay. well, she came from Europe. I, I've Europe. actually forgotten what city she was on. Okay. okay. Suppose, Aquila, Aquila in Italy, yeah. If she told the Europeans, make this world your home, mm -hmm. out of her... If she has tears of blissfulness, I'm sure she's feeling like that. Mm -hmm. And she said, make this world your home. Then the Europeans thought, then we should make our home so big it should cover the whole world, which they tried. <laughs> now that's a disaster. So physics means studying the phenomena of the physical world. If it reaches the edge of physicality, we must leave there and come up with a new science, isn't it? Come up with a new... New science, whatever yeah. you want to call it, I'll leave that uh, Absolutely. to you. I mean, that is the point I'm making, that you, you're changing your view of what science is to accommodate these things. And indeed, you're changing your view of what physics is to accommodate these things. And, and that is part of the challenge, and that is why the more conventional scientific community is, is reacting against that. I mean, some of them are reacting against things like higher dimensions, which are relatively respectable in the sense that famous scientists work on them. So even more are they reacting against this idea that you can extend science to accommodate the multiverse and the psychic experience or whatever. But I'm just saying that that is part of the, part of the process of, of linking science and spirituality, is changing what you mean by the nature of science. But the nature of science has always changed historically. And, and if ever science and spirituality does merge in some sense, it will mean that scientists must become more spiritual. Uh, no, I wouldn't say that. Okay. Uh, what I would say is right now, this whole fallacy of science and spirituality, what is it that we call as science? If something is a systematic approach to know something, and if you see it also, it's the same way, if I see it also, it's the same way, and ten other people see it, it's still the same way. That means it's not just a purely 
subjective experience, then we say it is science, right? Am I correct? That's the old version of science. All right. We'll <laughs> go by the old version. <laughs> yeah. Because both of us are in that state. <laughs> so now, what we call a spirituality is also a system that if I elucidate this is the way, if you do this, this and this, this will happen to you. If it… out of these hundred odd people, even if fifty people can experience it, in my opinion, it is science. <coughs> because I clearly mark out few steps and they take those steps and they come to such an experience. I should tell you this, some time ago <laughs> a very… a man who is super exposed to all kinds of spiritual stuff around the world, he said he's been with J.K., I don't know if you've heard of J.K., J. Krishnamurti. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. He was with J.K. for a long time till he passed away in Oj o Oja, Ojai. And then uh, he was with Rajneesh, he was with Ma… Uh, what's her name? Anandamayi Ma. Anandama Ma. Mm -hmm. And he was with some European teachers and he was with the U.G. Krishnamurti, who was another guy from Bangalore, all this. And then he came and stayed in our yoga center for two weeks. After two weeks, he said, can I meet Sadhguru? I did not know he was there. Then I said, okay, then uh, one afternoon I just met him. He said, Sadhguru, like this, I have been all these places. I said, so you're a failed candidate everywhere <laughs> and you come here now, <laughs> what do I do with you? He said, no, 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 Sadhguru, I have to say this, I have not come here for anything. He was already like seventy-nine something when I met him. He said, no, I'm not looking for anything, I'm… each one of them have contributed, I've read you and I've seen you and all that. I just wanted to see you, that's it. All I want to say is, I've been to all those places, experienced so many things, each one of them enhanced my life in some way. But you are the only one who has a spiritual factory. I said, what do you mean? I said, every week I'm just seeing people come, ordinary people come there. When they're leaving after three and a half days, they're all bursting with joy and screaming and dancing around and going. One batch after another, one batch after another, they're coming and going the same way. This is a spiritual factory. Then I thought this is a great idea because a factory means turning things out more efficiently than handmade stuff. I, I called our people and I know they won't <laughs> go with that. I said, uh, we should call this Isha spiritual factory <laughs> yeah. because the, the efficiency with which you are functioning, it is a spiritual factory. We have a rollout. Whoever comes this way, when they come out, at least reasonably they'll come out that way, all right? <laughs> so, when we are able to turn out the same thing or bring a whole lot of people to similar or if not same, similar experiences repeatedly, again and again and again, not in a few years, not in two hundred years like science, for thousands of years we are able to do that. Why is that not science? Oh, mm. I'm saying, if, I mean, if I, this, I, this is not infinity, this is supposed to be and. I, no, and, uh, okay. We but, should remove mm. and, science and science. <laughs> but… Okay, I think I'm gonna pause it right there. Whenever he's, whenever he's talking about um, getting fifty different people or a hundred people and fifty of them having the same experience, I was thinking like maybe the all experience something with the same method, uh, method but the experience is a little bit different for each one. This makes this experience subjective because it's a little bit different, but the meth the method is the same. It's like saying one plus one equals elephant, one plus one equals cat, one plus one equals eleven. The method one plus one is always there, but the outcome, the result is different. That's what makes it subjective because the, the results are different. One plus one equals two, one plus one equals two, one plus one equals two, one plus one equals two. That makes it objective because in every every result is the same. The method and the result is the same, objective reality. <coughs> it's not different for people. <clears throat> I thought maybe Sadhguru was talking something along, along those lines where the, like not everyone gets the same experience perhaps. Because that, you know, whenever he, whenever we do something, even people who go to his foundation, I'm sure not every single one of them that goes there in three weeks become blissed. 
you know, even Sadhguru himself says that he may not be the right guru for everyone. Uh, obviously, he's not the right guru for everyone, but it's just more along the lines that if you go to him, he might not be the right guru for you. Um, so, this is the reason why it's, it's a bit of, I, I say it's a bit of more subjective, and the reason why I, I highly recommend people to watch multiple gurus and swamis to see what works best for them, who they seem to connect with. Um, that's, again, you, just because you feel like you connect with someone doesn't mean that they are your guru or swami because there could be just a little bit more that you don't know about. <clears throat> and so the, the, uh, and the fact that when he said that whenever he talks to a hundred of them, one fifth of them only works, that still proves that it's subjective because if, if you do a method that's objective, that means if you do it to a hundred people it, and it will work on, uh, it'll have the same results all the time. The result is always the same there is no difference in the results that makes it objective this is the reason why I, I again I, I say these things are very subjective because everyone has a different experience different lived experience and also how far along you are in this will also vary will change your experience but anyways that's the part three hopefully the next one is going to be the last one if you like my content please consider subscribing thumbs up thumbs down down below thanks for watching I'll see you in the next vid